I don't want to be like anyone. I want to be an apex predator. Barbara, what did you do? My life hasn't been what you probably think it has. We all have our struggles. Have you ever been in love? A long, long time ago. You? So many times. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Welcome to the future. Life is good, but it can be better. And why shouldn't it be? All you need is to want it. Think about finally having everything you always wanted. I can save today, but you can save the world. I take what I want in return. Everyone will see. The world needs you. You know what you need to do. Nothing good is born from lies. And greatness is not what you think. It's all art. It's, uh... That's just a trash can. It's just a trash can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Big surprise. DC just dropped a new trailer for Wonder Woman 1984, so we'll break it down. There's a couple new Wonder Woman versus Cheetah scenes, so I'll explain what's going on during that. There's a couple big Easter eggs, and we have DC fandom trailers coming up for all the DC movies in a little while, too. So be sure to subscribe to get all those videos. I'll do a special giveaway for DC Fandom as well. They're sending me a bunch of stuff in a special box. I had to sign a whole bunch of forms to get it, so I'll find out what that is pretty soon. There's also a bunch of new Wonder Woman 1984 footage that they're going to show off separately as part of a big movie re-release plan that I'll explain later in the video. I'll number these as we go along, but just going through the footage shot by shot. So most of this new footage focuses on the Cheetah character and what her transformation to full-blown Cheetah is like during the movie and how Wonder Woman reacts to that, along with the big epic battle they get into after she becomes full Cheetah. But the new Cheetah scenes that they put in this trailer are actually taken from a couple different places in the movie. It's a couple scenes they chopped up and then jammed together with some voiceover from a different part of the trailer that aren't necessarily related. The voiceover scene in the first part is Barbara Minerva talking to Maxwell Lord after he's taken in the full power of the Dreamstone later in the movie, making her second wish, asking to become a true apex predator. That's the final wish she makes to him in order to become full comic book cheetah, but that's not actually what her wish is, as you heard her say. She says she doesn't want to be like anyone else, which is just a reference to Wonder Woman. She's saying she literally doesn't want to become Wonder Woman. She wants to be something different, something more. So the Dreamstone, in true twisted movie fashion, as you would expect, interprets her wish in the worst possible way by literally turning her into a monstrous animal-like apex predator. It's a very monkey's paw situation. Or if you're a big anime fan, it's like the Fate Stay series with the Grail. You make a wish on the Grail, but it fulfills your wish in the most nightmarish way possible. So Cheetah gets all this power, but in turn has to give up her humanity. The second part of that scene is footage of Kristen Wiig running really fast like Wonder Woman while she still looks like a human. That's from way earlier in the movie as she makes her first wish on the Dreamstone. And if I didn't say it before, the Dreamstone is that special black rock. That's the actual name of it. It was created by one of the gods, one of the Greek gods in the Wonder Woman pantheon, but they never say which god during the movie. 
And it's not like the first movie where there's an actual god in the movie showing up pulling the strings from behind. It's just Maxwell Lord and Cheetah being the villains. But the first wish that Cheetah makes is to be just like Wonder Woman when she's still Barbara Minerva. Like, I wish I could be just like Diana. So the Dreamstone's twisted interpretation of that is that she gets all of Wonder Woman's powers, taking power from Wonder Woman. The stone giveth and the stone taketh away. You have to give it something of yourself in order for its magic to work. So Wonder Woman winds up giving up her power without realizing it when she wishes for Steve Trevor to come back to life. And that's how Mr. Fanny Pack himself winds up showing up in the movie. So it really is Steve Trevor running around, but that explains some of the big power shift twists during the movie. It's kind of a gradual thing through the film too. Like this fight scene here between the two of them midway through the movie in the White House is Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor trying to save the president from Maxwell Lord and Cheetah. But by this time, she's gotten way weaker and Cheetah has gotten way stronger, strong enough that she can soak damage from the Lasso of Truth. Like you can see when she catches it here, Winter Soldier style. So Cheetah is basically upgrading herself through the course of the film a couple different times. Later in the movie, Maxwell Lord also upgrades himself using the Dream Stone, and that's when you see him in the special broadcast station here, transmitting his power all over the world simultaneously, and things really go off the rails. That's around the time that Cheetah makes her final wish to become the Apex Predator and becomes full Cheetah. Then as part of that new footage, that's where this scene of Wonder Woman in the full gold armor is saying, Barbara, what did you do? Like, oh hell no, I can't believe you just did this. Then they lay into each other in this huge fight scene. But by this time in the movie, she's lost most of her power, so that explains the logic behind that golden suit of armor. She needs it to protect herself from Cheetah because Cheetah's become so strong at this point. If you've ever watched any of the animated DC movies, they do a lot of Cheetah versus Wonder Woman. And even when Wonder Woman is at full power, Cheetah's still powerful enough with her abilities to counter her. She's not quite as strong as Wonder Woman, but her claws can pierce Wonder Woman's skin. So you have to imagine that this gold armor is crazy powerful. The way that Wonder Woman talks about it during the movie is that she keeps it around as an heirloom of the Amazons. And it was created by one of her ancestors who melted down the armor pieces of a bunch of other Amazonians to just make a really badass suit and it does a bunch of really cool things. It's not just pure armor. The wings actually work. They articulate. They actually fully built a practical version of this for them to film in the movie with. So you have to picture her walking around on set between takes trying not to poke people's eyes out while they were filming this. Wonder Woman doesn't really start getting her power back enough to fight Cheetah till the end of the movie when she finally comes to grips with the reality of what the Dreamstone has done and she has to take back her Steve Trevor wish in order to save the world. But that's what this scene of the trailer is all about where he's saying, you know what you have to do. Patty Jenkins was also talking about Wonder Woman 3 and I know a lot of people are like, will Cheetah come back in future movies? Would she ever appear in a Suicide Squad sequel? Because technically she's a villain of the DC universe now. Wonder Woman 1984 isn't so much about how Wonder Woman defeats villains. It's more about how she tries to save everyone. That also includes the villains. Like she tries to save Maxwell Lord. She also tries to save Cheetah because she used to be her friend, Barbara Minerva. They kind of established that at the beginning of the film. So you sympathize with Cheetah a little bit more like, oh, we can see why she made this choice to become the Cheetah character. But she has this big fall from grace and unlike Wonder Woman who is able to take back her wish and let Steve Trevor die again, Cheetah is not able to wish away her powers. She still wants to have all these abilities. So she could always come back during Wonder Woman 3 in present day still in full Cheetah form with all of her powers. The way that Patty Jenkins talks about it though is that she won't start working on Wonder Woman 3 for a little while. It'll probably take about three years to get that movie out. And she said that that would be her very last Wonder Woman movie at DC. It's still years away, so I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. They're just taking it one movie at a time. If you're a big Pedro Pascal fan, though, he's on fire in the movie. And obviously, there's all the Mandalorian Season 2 stuff coming up. In a couple weeks, they'll be dropping all those DC fandom trailers. I'll try to do as many of those videos as I can. It's going to be a lot of stuff. It'll be really cool, though. As long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see all those videos when I post them. And the special new Wonder Woman 1984 footage is supposed to screen during the Inception re-release in movie theaters. But while you wait for everything, everyone click here for that brand new Marvel Shang-Chi teaser in Iron Man Easter eggs. And click here for that brand new Ryan Reynolds Justice League Snyder Cut video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.